Hi folks, and welcome to Intermediate Bird Identification. I'm Leanne Latchmoy from Birds Canada here in Saskatoon. This video is made in part to support participation in the Saskatchewan Breeding Bird Atlas, a citizen science project that aims to determine the status and distribution of birds that nest across the province. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to be covering corvids, chickadees, nuthatches, and woodpeckers. The focus, as always, is going to be on adult birds that nest in Saskatchewan, but today especially, many of these species can be found across the prairies and definitely across the much of Canada too. So, let's get going. Let's start with the corvids. So, this is a family of really intelligent birds. They're conspicuous, they're noisy, and they're medium to large size. These are going to be really familiar birds to most folks here. So, first off, we've got the blue jay. This is a small corvid. It's got a nice, long, rounded tail and a crested head. As with most birds with a crest, depending on how the bird is feeling in that particular moment or what it's trying to signal, it can either raise or lower that crest. So always keep that in mind when you see a drawing of a bird that has a crest. It can be raised or lowered because um, the feathers are movable on a bird. So. This blue jay is various shades of blue and black with some white accents. They're really gorgeous birds and you are not likely to confuse this with pretty well anything else. It's very, very boldly patterned and marked. Um, these birds are bold and curious, and if you've ever um, set out a peanut ring in an area that has blue jays, you know that they will eat you out of house and home because they absolutely love peanuts. Um, you'll find them in forests as well as in cities and towns. Another one that's going to be really familiar, especially if you live on the prairies, is the black-billed magpie. This is a medium-sized corvid. It's got a very, very long tapered tail, and it's got a sturdy all-purpose bill. It's black and white overall with iridescent flight and tail feathers. So on the wing and on the tail, you're going to see these beautiful iridescent sheens, and it has these really nice big white patches that, that display um, as the bird is flying away. And I know it's not a favorite of everyone who is from Saskatchewan or the prairies, but I promise you, if you were to see this same bird in a tropical setting, you would just lose your mind. These are just such incredibly gorgeous birds, and I think a lot of us, because we see them often and they can be kind of a pain um, around the yard, that you know we don't we're not terribly fond of them but just i usually try to encourage folks to take a moment and, and appreciate how beautiful these birds are again as with the other ones in the family these are bold and curious birds um and you'll find them as you probably know in cities and towns as well as rural areas um, generally south of the boreal forest Another familiar bird is going to be the American crow. This is another medium-sized corvid. In flight, it shows a rounded tail, and you're going to want to pay attention to that when comparing to a uh, common raven. It's also got smooth throat feathers. This is another feature um, to use when you're comparing to the raven. So smooth throat feathers. It doesn't have any ruffling, um, and it's got a sturdy all-purpose bill. It's rather fine compared to that of the raven, and we're going to compare the two side by side in a second here. Otherwise, it's overall a black bird. Um, it's quite shiny if you get it in the right light, um, but it is not iridescent. So black overall and shiny. Um, this is a bird that's common across most habitats in Saskatchewan. They start to peter out as you get to the far north, but you can still find them um, all the way up north too. So the other similar looking big black bird is the common raven. This is definitely a large corvid and I'm always surprised at how big they are, especially when we see them more often in, um, in the fall and in the winter. You see them perched up on a fence post and you're going, gosh, that is a large bird when you're used to seeing American crows all summer. So in flight, it's going to show a wedge-shaped tail or a diamond-shaped tail. So that's really, really useful um, when you're trying to compare the two birds in flight. Um, however, that doesn't really work when the birds are perched at all. So you're going to be paying attention to those throat feathers again. And so here they are in the raven, all nice and shaggy, almost like kind of a lion's mane, um, you know, below the neck. So really nice shaggy throat feathers. And it's got that really large um, all-purpose bill. So this really much larger compared to the rest of the head than it is in the crow, and we'll compare the two side by side in a minute. Um, 
This is a bird that is increasing in the prairie and parkland, but it's more like it's reclaiming its former haunts. So back when there was bison roaming the landscape, there were ravens here as well. And with the extirpation of the bison, the ravens moved up into the forested areas. And so in the last 20 or so years, they seem to have been moving further and further south, and this is, seems to be increasing. All right, looking at the two side by side, got the American crow and the common raven. So taking a look at that bill, um, for the American crow, it is much less big. So when you're looking at that, look at the rest of the bird's head. It doesn't take up quite as much space if you were to imagine, um, you know, flipping that bill back around and seeing how much space on the head it takes. Um, for the common raven, this is really quite a big, large, heavy bill. It's quite massive compared to the rest of the bird head. Um, those lovely throat feathers are another thing you're going to want to look at, especially if you're trying to figure out um, if it's a, a crow or a raven and it's a perched bird and you don't have a good sense for size. So those throat feathers, really nice big and shaggy ones on the raven and smooth throat feathers on the American crow. Um, nothing to make note of there um, in terms of, you know, no big eye-catching clumps of feathers. In flight, again, we're looking for that rounded tail feather in the American crow and that wedge-shaped or diamond-shaped tail in the common raven. Okay, let's move on to the black-capped chickadee. This is going to be a, a bird that is familiar to pretty well everyone in Canada. Um, it's a very small songbird and it's got a large rounded head, a very long tail, and a very, very small itty-bitty little bill. It's got a black cap and throat and it's got a bit of a rusty buffy washed on the sides. This is a very bold and curious bird and it's definitely very common at feeders. Um, you'll find them in tree or shrubby areas and surprisingly they do nest in cavities. I find that most people are, are surprised to hear that. Um, and you'll often hear the familiar chickadee dee 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 or cheeseburger. So they make those um, very common familiar noises to us. So that is our black capped chickadee. All right, next up we have nuthatches. These are birds with short tails and rather pointed bills. They both have slate blue upper parts, and these are birds that climb down, up, and around tree trunks and branches. So you're going to be seeing them scampering around right there on the tree branches and tree trunks. Um, it's kind of amazing to watch them as they scamper about on the branch. Um, they do have an undulating flight, so they fly in an up and down kind of manner. And these birds are definitely common at feeders and treed areas. Both of them nest in cavities, and if you want to distinguish between the two species, you're looking at breast color and facial markings. White-breasted nuthatch is the one we've got up on top there. It's got a white breast and belly, and it's also got a plain white face, and it's definitely the larger of the two. If you have a bird feeder and you happen to see them side by side, the size difference is quite notable, but otherwise size is really tricky to tell. Um, so this is useful for um, cluing you in if you've got a different bird at your feeder. Um, on the bottom here, we've got the red-breasted nuthatch. It's got a rusty best, uh, breast and belly, and it's got a black eye line through what would otherwise be a fairly white face. And it's definitely the smaller and more delicate of the two species. So those are the nuthatches. Next up, we've got woodpeckers. These are birds with strong, powerful chisel-like bills. They have stiff tail feathers that they use as a prop when they are pecking at um, branches and tree trunks. Males have an additional color patch, but otherwise sexes are pretty, look, pretty similar looking. And they excavate cavities both for nesting and for roosting. First, we've got the yellow-bellied sapsucker. This is a medium-sized woodpecker. Both sexes so the, show this really nice red cap. Um, they have this nice strong black bib, and they've got black and white barring on the back with a nice big white patch on the wing. They've got a yellowish wash to the undersides, and males have an additional red throat patch, which is um, kind of white to yellowish in the females. These are birds that drill those, roll, those rows of shallow wells into trees, and they'll actually do this to drink the sap and attract insects and they'll actually eat those insects as well. Um, an interesting association here between these birds and um, ruby-throated hummingbirds, ruby-throated hummingbirds show up um, long before the first wildflowers are in bloom and so what they actually do is they will follow around um, 
would yellow-bellied sapsuckers and sneakily drink from their wells when they're not attended. And um, I was actually able to see this for the first time in the spring of 2020. I've been watching birds for a while and it was just a really neat experience to see this in the early spring, um, watching this little hummingbird drinking from these wells. So that's a really neat association that you wouldn't have expected between a woodpecker and a hummingbird. Um, these birds are common in aspen stands and other treed areas where they have deciduous trees. Next up is the familiar downy woodpecker. This is our smallest woodpecker. It's got a relatively short stubby bill and we're going to compare that to the hairy woodpecker next. Overall it's black and white with a plain white belly and spotted wings. It's got black dots on the, the outer tail feathers but that's actually um, kind of a difficult clue to see. Um, depending on how the bird's tail feathers are held, you might not actually see those dots. And if it's at a distance, they can be kind of tough to see. Males do have a small little tiny red patch on the back of their head. And these birds are actually small enough to forage on small branches and weed stalks. So you're not gonna see any other woodpecker um, grasping at weed stalks and foraging there. So that's another um, clue for you. These are definitely a common woodpecker um, anywhere that you've got trees. The similar looking hairy woodpecker is a medium sized woodpecker. Its bill is long and sturdy. We'll compare that to the downy woodpecker again in a second here. Um, overall, very, very similar to the downy. It's black and white overall. Another one with a plain white belly and spotted wings. Um, its outer tail feathers are plain. So you could use that as a clue, but it's not the most reliable one to use. Again, that downy woodpecker, um, depending on how it's holding its tail feathers, <clears throat> you might not actually see those dots. And again, males show that nice little red patch on the back of the head. These birds prefer larger branches than downy, so they're not the ones you're going to be seeing on the teeny tiny uh, wisps of branches or weeds. And again, this is another common one in treed areas. So let's take a look at these two birds side by side. And Janice Hurlbert from Alberta um, graciously let me use this photo of hers. Um, she photographed these birds one after the other on almost the exact same spot on this tree branch. So this is a really good comparison of both the size and the relative length of those bills. So these two birds do differ in size, but size is really tough to tell when you're just watching birds. Um, you know, you're not going to go up and measure them. You're not going to always have a sense for how big that tree is and therefore how big or small the woodpecker may or may not be. So the best way to tell a downy woodpecker um, apart from a hairy woodpecker is to use the relative size of the bill compared to the rest of the head. So downies have a small stubby bill and the bill makes up less than half the length of the bird's head, excluding the bill. So imagine, you know, flipping that bill, you know, back over onto the bird's face. It's only going to extend kind of to about, um, about the end of the back of the eye right there. So it's not going to pass the midpoint of the head. However, if you were to do the same for the hairy woodpecker, woodpecker which has a large bill, if you take that great big bill, it is going to take up more than half of the length of the bird's head. So imagine flipping that bill back around, it's going to extend well beyond um, the eye. So that is your the most reliable way to tell those two species apart. You can sort of see that downy has a, the downy has the dot here on the outer tail feathers, but again that is really really easily missed. So I would highly recommend using that relative proportion of the bill length for telling downy and hairy woodpeckers apart. <clears throat> Venturing further north into the forest, we've got the black-backed woodpecker. This is a medium-sized woodpecker with a black back, nape, and crown. Um, it's white below with black barring on the flanks, and males have this really lovely golden yellow patch on the, for on the forehead. Um, these birds forage by flaking bark off of conifers, which is a neat little strategy. Um, oftentimes a great way to, to look for them is to see, you know, an area that has a bunch of conifers that have the bark flaked off of them, and especially if you see fresh bark on the ground um, in these round flakes. So I'll just move in on the side and flake the bark right off. Um, you can see that solid black back, um, especially in this image here. You'll find these birds, like I mentioned, in the boreal forest, but they are a burn specialist, so you'll often find them in areas that have burned over.
<clears throat> Similar is the American three-toed woodpecker. It's another small woodpecker. It's a little bit larger than the downy, but it's again on the small side. And it's black and white overall with black barring on the back as well as the flanks. So unlike that black back, this three-toed is gonna have barring all the way down um, the center of the back. It's got a bit more white markings on the face and the males also show this really gorgeous golden yellow um, patch on the forehead. They too will forage by flaking the bark off of conifers and you will find these birds like I mentioned in the boreal forest and especially burns as well. Next up we've got the colorful northern flicker. This is a woodpecker on the larger end of things. It's pinkish overall with really colorful feather shafts and underwings and undertails. It's got a bold white rump patch which is highly visible as the bird is flying off so that's a really helpful identification clue on the flying bird. It's also got a spotted breast with a nice black crescent shaped bib and this is a species that comes in two color morphs. So the one most commonly encountered in Saskatchewan and in eastern Canada is the yellow shafted and males of this species have a nice black mailer. In both sexes they're going to show those really gorgeous um, yellow shafts to the feathers and as well that kind of very nice yellow underwing and undertail. The red shafted variety as you may have guessed has red shafts in place of the yellow and so it's also going to be showing red coloration on the underwing and undertail. We do have the red shafted variety in Saskatchewan, but they just start to show up in the extreme western portion of the province. So the red shafted variety is going to have a bit of a grayer face and males are going to show a red mailer instead of a black one. Um, you do occasionally see birds that are kind of integrates, so you'll see um, the ones that I've seen are typically more yellow shafted looking with a couple of red feathers, but just know that you can see birds that are kind of mixed between the two. And this is an interesting species because it tends to forage on the ground a lot, and you may have seen this in your yard in the fall where you've got a group of flickers bouncing around on your lawn and you might be wondering what on earth they're doing. Well, these birds are actually um, ant specialists, so they really love to go after ants and that's what they're foraging for in your yard. So if you see them bouncing around on the ground, know that they're after ants and that is a woodpecker, you're not crazy. Um, these birds favor open habitats near trees. And last but not least, we've got the very large woodpecker, which is the pileated. Um, it's black overall with black and white stripes on the face. It's got a prominent red crest in both sexes, um, which is more red overall in the male. So that forehead area is going to be all red in the male and it's going to be black in the female. Um, the males also have that mailer that is red where it's black in the females. In flight, they also show um, a white patch on the wings. These guys excavate really large rectangular holes. Um, so if you've ever seen those kind of long oblong holes, um, especially at the base of, of conifer trees, um, they're in search of very large carpenter ants. So that's what they're after. And you'll find these guys in forested areas with large trees for nesting. So more commonly in the boreal forest, but if you've got large tracts of aspen stands, you might just be lucky enough to see the affiliated woodpecker in those habitats as well. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. At Birds Canada, we're always happy to help you learn to identify birds and have citizen science programs for all skill levels. Visit our website at birdscanada.org or follow us on social media at Birds Canada to learn more or to get involved. If you have any questions or comments about the video, you can reach out at skatlas at birdscanada.org. Lastly, do check out the Saskatchewan Breeding Bird Atlas website at sk.birdatlas.ca and follow us on Facebook where we post links to upcoming workshops and other training opportunities. Thanks again and happy birding!